Oh boy, have we got some work to do. In the interest of keeping this video from becoming a snooze fest, I did most of the prep work off camera. But you guys really didn't miss much because all I did was disassemble it and then neutralize and clean all the parts. Honestly, I was expecting a lot more wear and corrosion on the plates, but there was really only a thin layer of grime on the surface. Well, that and the brass tube inserts that I used to fix some leak issues uh, basically completely dissolved. Initially when I was building this thing, I really didn't think our potassium hydroxide solution would be strong enough to basically completely dissolve the brass. But it was. So I suppose some lessons are learned the hard way. Another lesson I learned the hard way is that shaker cups do not make for good reservoirs. Well, no shit, Sherlock! The one we used started developing some pretty significant cracks and really wasn't viable anymore. So we're gonna have to address that, and hopefully properly this time. With everything cleaned up, I got started on reassembling everything. The cell was really the easy part because I also reworked the wiring a little bit to simplify the design and to make it easier to operate. But functionally, it's all still the same as it was. Now, let's get into a reservoir and bubble. And the solution to our problem is PVC. Well, I guess in this case it's actually ABS. But it's cheap, easy to get, and simple to work with. So it's perfect for us. Now a new reservoir is only part of what I had in mind. In this build I want to install a system that will release excess pressure in the event of a flashback. Holy I think industrially these are called overpressure relief valves. Anyways, I went to Home Depot to grab some brass fittings to serve as the main body of the valve, and then use some other fittings that I already had on hand to uh, basically machine a little cap just to fit on top. Basically my design for this valve is just a spring-loaded lid on top of a collar with an adjustable screw on top that allows us to change the tension on the spring, which in turn allows us to change the activation pressure of the valves. Once the parts were done, I got to work mounting the fittings and the valves to our bubbler and reservoir. And at some point I got the idea to make a thread tab out of a hose barb so that I could actually use my fittings how they were meant to be used. Because our PVC was thick enough and our hose barb had the same thread as our fittings, uh, it worked perfectly. With that and a little bit of marine epoxy, we arrive in the present. Now all we need is a frame to mount this stuff to, and then we can get started with testing. We're in the shop now, but before I came out here, I did some initial testing with baking soda electrolyte, and from the looks of it, we have no leaks, and we can actually produce gas. I've already drained the electrolyte from the system here, so this thing's empty. And before I put our potassium hydroxide electrolyte in here, I want to test that our pressure relief valves actually work. Oh, and for those of you wondering, the oxygen and MAP gas here is essentially so we can adjust the temperature of the flame. So essentially, I'm combining my HHO generator torch with an oxypropane setup. So we'll see how it works. I think, I think it should be pretty nice, but I have no idea. First, I'm just gonna try propane. Uh, we'll see what happens. Testing. Okay, I'll turn on the oxygen a little bit. I'll turn on the propane a little bit. If I light it, we should get a pop. Okie dokie, now that we know that if this thing goes, it will not turn into a pipe bomb on us, I feel comfortable putting our KOH electrolyte in there and firing this thing up. Oh, we're looking real good. So this is like power supply on absolute maximum. All right, I've had it running for a second here to blow all the air out of the system. And uh, I think I'm ready to light it up. Okay. Now let me turn up the propane. It's quite a lot. Okay, now let me turn on the oxygen. Come on, careful. Let's try some nickel silver brazing rod. Oh, it's totally brazing. Let's see if it's gonna get that. Yeah, I'll turn up the propane a bit.
So um, I turned off the oxygen and dropped our propane way down and uh, I cranked the power uh, the power supply all the way as high as she'll go and this is basically just our HHO that we're producing ourselves and a little bit of propane to uh, adjust the flame just a little bit. If I hit this piece of mild steel here with our torch, it gets red hot very quickly. Probably at least as fast as it would go with just a regular propane torch. And like it's such a gentle flame. There we go. It's a show on. Propane down a little bit. That is liquid. That is liquid. So my friends, here we go. Our very own HHO oxypropane torch working beautifully. Uh, I don't see any leaks so far. Let's hope it stays that way, fingers crossed. But uh, I think that's it for today. I'm making a part two to this video because I want to make inline flashback arresters. And uh, if you have any questions about any of the stuff I went over in this video, let me know. I will put it into the next video. Alrighty, I hope you guys take care and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye bye